Welcome to another money saving DIY. Today we are going to do an oil change, an interior filter replacement and an air filter replacement. I'll be showing you how to do it and also how much it costs me. During this job I will be using some tools that I have already used in other videos. Let's start off by lifting the car at the right front wheel. Removing the lug nuts is very easy with a breaker bar. After breaking loose the lug nuts, we'll be raising the car some more so we can uh, remove the right front wheel. I always like to put the wheel underneath the car so when the jack fails, the car lands on the wheel and not on my foot. We'll start off by removing two screws from this side panel and I'll be using my toolbox that I bought earlier. When this is done, we'll just put the wheel back on the car and we will lower the car back to its normal position so the oil drains a lot easier than when it needs to go uphill. To get to the drain pan, we need to go underneath the car and then starting off by removing the bottom cover. It's held in by 11 screws, so we'll be removing them one by one. This is the drain plug of the car, but there is no clear access to it because this bottom cover is still in the way. To remove this bottom cover there are two more screws to remove and it's also held in by the two screws above the right front wheel, but as you've seen they're already removed. The oil filter is located right above the drain plug. We'll be coming back uh, after a few moments to replace the oil filter. Using the breaker bar, breaking loose the sump plug is very easy. After that, we'll be needing a drain pan to catch all the old oil. When you look at the drain plug, you'll see that there's a ceiling around it. Um, we'll be reusing the drain plug, but we will need to replace this ceiling. It's a very quick replacement, very simple. While the oil is draining out of the car, we'll be starting off with the air filter replacement. There's a cover that's held in by five screws that we need to remove to get to the air filter. Removing the air filter housing is very simple. Just remove the three bolts that keep the air filter housing together. The screws removed, the air filter housing pops right open very easily. The old air filter just slides out, just like the housing, very simple. With the filter removed, it's a good moment to clean out the air filter housing. Nobody wants dirty air in his car engine. The dirty air comes in through the bottom hole and the clean air goes right to the engine through the top hole. Here you can see how dirty the old air filter was, so it needed a replacement with a new one. The new air filter just slides in like the old one came out. Now let's reassemble the filter housing and don't forget to tighten the three bolts. 
With this done, it's only a matter of putting back this bottom cover. Et voila, this is the final result. Fresh air is provided. Now it's time to put back the drain plug so we can add new oil to the engine. Don't forget to clean off all the oil and then hand tighten the drain plug. Don't over tighten because you don't want the screw to break. Now it's time to make a big oily mess by removing the old oil filter. I used a 32mm socket to break free the filter housing, but it's a bad angle to film, so I only got some images of me unscrewing the housing by hand. The designers decided to put the oil filter upside down, so when removing the filter, all the oil that's in the filter comes right out and it's quite a big mess. Removing this mess is quite a job. The oil filter housing contains the old oil filter. You can pop it just out like this so all the oiled oil drains out we'll be putting in a new oil filter but first we need to remove the sealing that's on the oil filter housing if you forget to remove the sealing uh, you will have a small to large oil leakage now it's time to put in a new oil filter It also contains a new ceiling for the filter housing. Before you can assemble the ceiling, you first need to grease it up with some oil. If you don't do this properly, you'll have trouble removing the filter housing next time. Be sure to put back the ceiling at the same place where you removed the old one. Now that's ready to put it back where it came from. And so the oil filter is ready, the drain plug is ready and the air filter is ready. So now we just need to put back the bottom covers and put in some new engine oil. Especially don't forget the two screws of the front panel above the right front wheel. When Putting back in the wheel, it's very important to use the torque wrench to torque down the lug nuts to the right spec. I like to stick to the original engine oil, in my case it's a Selenia 5W30 oil. When adding oil, it's important to know how much oil you need. So look in your car manual and in my case it says it needs 4.9 liters of engine oil. I always add 90% of this 4.9 liters, then I'll go for a ride and after that I'll top off uh, the oil to the right amount. This is all because I don't want to overfill the engine compartment. Now on the first startup of the engine the car will complain of a low oil pressure. That's because the oil filter housing is empty because it couldn't be filled up. One beep later the pressure is stabilized and we're ready to hit the road. The car computer also keeps up the age of the oil, so when it needs an oil change, it will start blinking the oil indicator light. Now let's tell the car it has some new engine oil by connecting through its OBD2 port. The port is covered by this small panel on the driver's side of the car. Connecting is a very simple, just plug in the OBD2 scan tool 
into the OBD2 port and the scan tool will start up. Together with some friends, we bought an Autel MaxiDiac scanning tool. And through this, I'll tell the car that it has new engine oil. The menus of the scan tool are very simple. Service, oil reset, go to the European list of cars. We're driving a Lancia, so we need to go to Lancia. Processing the data, please wait. Now let's select the Delta 181. It's a 1.6 multi jet. We're having the Bosch diesel injection system. And now it's communicating with the vehicle. We're going to special functions. And of all the functions that we need, we're interested in the oil change function. Now the scan tool is reading the data in the computer of the car. Now the car tells us when was the last oil change and in my case it was at 70,000 kilometers. Uh, our next oil change will be in 15,000 kilometers but I am changing my oil once a year. Now continue to the next step and tell him that he has got new engine oil et voila. Now you can see it has 35,000 kilometers to next change and the last oil change was at 90,000 kilometers. The next step is finalizing this procedure. The car computer tells us to put the key to the stop position so the car gets the opportunity to save all the information. Time to turn the ignition key to stop. Press any key to continue and now it will download all the data to the computer of the car in approximately 20 seconds. When this is done we can put the ignition back to the first position and this will end the diagnosing session. Now we can just scroll back down the menus to exit the diagnostic system. Now let's shut down the scanning tool by removing it from the OBD2 port. And finally, we only need to put back this cover to hide away the port. Don't forget to put back the two screws that keeps the cover in place. Our final job of the day is replacing the cabin filter and it's located at the front passenger side. It's one of the easiest part of replacing. Just remove this side panel. It's not held in by any screws or bolts. It just pops out like this. The cabin filter is located behind this plastic cover. You need to pull it towards you and shove it to the front and so it unveils the cabin filter. I advise you to always clean out the filter housing of any debris because it will keep the filter from doing its job. Inserting the new in cabin filter is a very simple procedure. It's only a bit hard because it's in a tight space. Now let's put back the plastic cover in the reverse way. And then finally, the interior trim pops right in like it came out and we're done. I would like to end this video with the economical result of this job. It cost me 273 euros 
and the garage did me an offer of approximately 350 euros so we've got a savings of 79 euros and we also have a permanent access to the auto scanning tool unfortunately the money saving diy still has a deficit of 530 euros so we will have to keep on coming back with some more jobs to save money thank you guys for watching please like please subscribe and i'll see you soon for the next job